Let me start by saying that um, disbursement or the student loan, our operations is kind of an ecosystem that we operate in. What I mean is that whatever we do here is dependent on other um, players within the, that ecosystem. Um, for instance, if you apply for a loan, before we disburse to you, we need to verify from the institution that you are applying from. The institution has to give us a master list of all the students that are in that institution. So if we cross-check that you are a student of that institution, that is the only time we can proceed with payment or disbursement. Now, we have had situations that people apply for a loan, then you call for the master list from the institution and you realize the person or those people are not in the master list. What it means is that those people, from our point, it means those people are not even students at all in that institution. Now, we all know there are a lot of things that go on. People forge admission letters, people forge even, uh, what do you call it, student ID cards and identities, right? So the only time we are able to verify that you are a student of the, uh, an institution A or B is when we receive the master list from that institution. That's the only time we are able to verify whether you are a student or not. In the case of those who receive their money once and they don't get again, it is possible that there are a number of factors, but it's possible that after the first disbursement, the master list that comes back from the school they are not included. We, we all know that when you register in an institution for the first year or second year, whatever semester or year that you register in, when you start academic work, there are a number of factors probably that can even take you out of the institution, right? Students engage in all sorts of things. There are things that can take you out of the institution. So the only time we are able to disperse money, as I said, to you, students or borrowers is when we are able to verify that they are students of the particular institution that the application is coming from. So it's possible that the Mr. A who applied and got the first disbursement, then the second disbursement never came. It's possible that the institution hasn't recognized that person as a student. If I say that, what I mean is, it means that institution from the master list that person's name or that person's detail is not part of it. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, uh, a lot of channels that you can use. If, for instance, you've received your first disbursement or you've received for the first year, second year, you've not received it we have campus offices that you can easily go to and then they'll cross-check whether your application, whether you are captured in the system or not. So it is very straightforward. You don't need to go anywhere at all. We have campus, uh, campus offices, every, all the major institutions we have in Ghana, we have campus offices. Um, the question you asked, there are two questions you've asked. Number one is if you, if you are on the fund or if you apply, how soon you get your money? The number two is that, as according to what you are saying, is um, they, they, they get admissions and they are looking for money. Yes, anybody can get admission and look for money. The student loan, the student loan, the student loan is an optional funding that you need to get. What I mean is that if you don't apply to student loan, student loan cannot say, oh, you finish school, you have admission, so come for money. You get it. So you need to apply to the fund before the fund will do its own due diligence and then disperse money to you. That's the first point. So it isn't that anybody that finished school 
we just have the money. Then we could have as well just say tertiary education is free of charge. So that's why I said it's optional. You need to apply, then you are verified, or when you finish the application process, the money is disbursed to you. On the second leg of how timely the money comes, or how soon you get the money when you apply, as I explained to you earlier, it has to do with the verifications that we need to put in place or we need to go through. If you are a first timer, for instance, you get your admission and you apply for a loan. Immediately you apply for a loan. What happens? We need to get the master list from the institution. For example, if you apply to if you get admission from Legon and you apply for a loan, Legon will have to feed the fund which we have our own internal arrangements with them. Legon will have to feed the fund with a list of all first year students or all the people that they have given admissions to. You get what I'm saying? You, Legon will have to feed the fund with that list. And it's the master list that we use to get to know whether Mr. A have applied for the loan or Mr. B have applied for the loan. So there could be two ways. Either the process of getting that master list from the institution's delay or maybe from our own internal arrangements, we could have some delay in the payment process. So it isn't the fact that when you finish school and you get admission, then you get the money. As I said, the loan is optional. You need to apply for it before the money is disbursed to you. My brother, if um, somebody says, I'll make this available to you, what does it mean? If I call TV3 and say, I'll make this document available to you, what does it mean? What it means is that TV3 will have to get that document or they have to come for the document. Or you have to tell me, I should send it through a motor rider or you're sending someone to pick it up. So if the government, of the day had made that statement that the loan will be made available to you. It doesn't mean that when you finish secondary school, immediately they will pick the list from all those who have completed secondary school and give them money to go to uh, the university. The loan will be made available. Availability means that making sure the terms and conditions are met before you are given. But what they have said or what we, um, the government is doing is that anybody who wants to get the loan, there shouldn't be any barrier at all that will prevent you from getting that loan. So if you look at the history of the student loan transfer, um, anyway, let me go back a little. Uh, those of us who went to school, like tertiary institutions, let me say from the 90s, I can talk from that point, right? Uh, there was something called the SNIT loan. If you were to take that SNIT loan, or if you were to apply for the SNIT loan, initial stages, you were asked to bring three people, three guarantors, that will sign the form to guarantee for you that when you finish school, you'll be able to pay the loan. Now, and those three guarantors, they should be people of good standing. That is, all the three of them must at least have contributed about 37, uh, 36 months to SNIT. So they should be SNIT contributors. So if you do the mathematics, 36 months, you are talking minimum about three years, right? You should be there. You should have worked and contributed to SNIT for minimum three years before you are qualified to guarantee for somebody. Personally, I needed a loan at the time to even go to school. But I didn't have anybody to guarantee for me to pick the loan. So only God knows how I managed to finish school, right? So today we are saying that that barrier that prevented so many students from getting or having access to the loan, we are going to remove or we have removed that barrier. We've removed that barrier by saying that when you have your Ghana card, that is a unique identity. 
that you have as an individual. You can just use that Ghana card, apply for the loan, and the loan will be disbursed to you. So the barrier of having the guarantors fill in your forms, some people, in some cases, you can, if you ask those before now, they'll tell you, you can go and wait for somebody in his house for two days, you won't find the person. They won't come, you know. So that barrier has been taken off. So you don't need anybody to guarantee or to sign your forms for you. When you are willing and you want the loan, you just need your Ghana card to apply for it and it will be dispersed to you. Yes, um, once the money hits your account, interest begins to run. Yes, um, we do a lot of sensitization on campuses, in our out offices and all that. We tell people or we tell students, prospective borrowers, that this is a loan. It is not a grant. It's not free money. When you take the loan, you have to pay back. And the basic thing we've all learned, even in primary school, about calculating interest is what? When you have your principal, you have your time, you have your rate, you have your amount by 100, you get the, your interest, you calculate your interest. The same way, as I said, the student loan fund, the student loan fund is not giving grants to students. What we do is we give loans. So what it means is that the fund needs to run, right? The fund needs to run. So anybody that takes money or loan, let me put it that way, if you take a loan, you are expected to pay back and you are expected to pay with interest. And sensitization, as I said, is going on. We tell everybody that when you take a loan, the time, the T factor in the interest that you calculate is there. So interest is calculated. But let me quickly add that the interest they are talking about, they are in two folds, right? We have the 12% that we do whilst we are in school. As soon as we disperse, when we disperse the money to you, then there is a waiting period of two years, of which time if you are able to pay that money, you are not going to pay any interest. Which bank in Ghana today, as we speak, can give you a loan or a facility of 12% per annum? Everybody will use the T-rail the T -rail, uh, T bill rates as a benchmark. So they will do higher. Probably the, the magic that probably I will see in my lifetime is even banks that will try to say, okay, we are matching the T-rail. And the T rate, uh, the T bill rate, right? Everybody will have the T bill rate and add some margins to it. But with the student loan, government has also subsidized the interest to cap it at 12 percent. That you have the 12 percent interest rate and not more than that. See? So if um, you tell me that students say they are not aware that when they take their money, interest start uh, accumulating. I'll be surprised because when we go out to do our sensitization, we let them know. We tell them, when you pick their money, interest is calculated on it. It is no free money. You have to pay back. And it's when you pay back that we are able to advance the loans to other people. If you don't pay back, we will not be able to do that. We need to keep the institution running as well. Uh, on the contrary, it's going to be much easier now because there's a unique identifier for every single individual in the country. 
whether it's student or whatever, your address system and your, you have your biometrics that comes in the Ghana card. So you cannot change your identity for anyone. In the past, what used to happen is, if when you have the guarantor, people will fill the form and even give you wrong address. People will fill the form and give you wrong information. So you can actually have the guarantor. You can actually have the details of the person, but you cannot trace the people. You can't trace them, you know. So uh, the other part of your question that's talking about the record, like um, how well do I think we'll be able to recover? Um, let me say that with a no guarantor system, I think the first batch of students that uh, will be, I think the first batch is going to be next year or next two years, yeah, next year, that will start uh, doing recovery from them. But from the measures that we've put in place, we realize it's going to be the safest and even the best way of recovering money because this is a system that you use your personal identity, just you. Nobody can forge your identity. Nobody can forge where you live or who you are related. Nobody can forge your blood. You know, the national ID card, the biometric card, when we say it captures your biometrics, that's what we mean. It captures things that are uniquely yours and not for anyone. So rather, people will find it difficult now to run away from the Student Loan Trust. If you have our money, we should be able to recover it as quickly as possible. And let me quickly add that the law empowers us as a fund to be able to recover even from your Senate contributions, right? So if you think that, oh, um, there is no guarantor, I can run away, it, can, it will not happen because it, the fact that you have the loan and you are contributing to Senate, it means that we should be able to have access to your information. We should be able to have access to the money. And somebody will say, okay, what of those who don't contribute to Senate? They don't contribute to Senate, yes, but they work. They contribute to t tier two, tier three, and all that, right? We have pension houses. There is no institution in this country that people work and they don't take care of their pensions. They don't put something somewhere that tomorrow, when I'm no more working or when I'm not fit enough, I will be able to have access to. The Student Loan Trust, through the biometric verification process, also have information or also have data regarding all that. So you cannot run away when you have a um, student loan. Before the no guarantor, like 2019 to 2020 academic year, we had about 5,225 applications. And when the no guarantor uh, policy was introduced, we recorded a jump to about 52,063 applications. You know, so it tells you that um, people really wanted this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, support. But because of the guarantor system, um, people were bad or people could not have access to the process. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is what uh, we are dealing with. And as the days go by, these applications keep moving up. They keep increasing. And when they move, uh, when the applications come in, as I explained, it's verified. And when it's verified, then it moves to the point of payment or disbursement, which we finally do. Of course, we cannot say that anybody um, that applies, we are able to 
meet that financial burden immediately. Yes, we are able to meet the financial burden, but some of them not immediate because it has to do with cash flows. And we all know, for instance, if I give you a check today, that there's a check in your name, when you pay it into the bank, it takes minimum two days, right, before it clears that you have your money. So sometimes some people apply and maybe the, t the time that they are expecting to receive their money, they may not receive their money at that exact time. But it doesn't mean we are not able to um, disperse their money to them. You know, so, and it's equally a human institution. So there are sometimes that some of those challenges may come in. So it is not entirely the case that we have people that apply and they never get the loan. If you apply and you don't get the loan, probably, probably, it means that your details or your verifications that we are talking about, your institution hasn't given us or hasn't told us that you are a student with them. If you are not a student with them, we cannot give you money. We need to verify that you are a student before we can pay monies to you. My vision is not very different from the vision of the fund itself. That um, I have to ensure um, that we have funds available, that we can do our disbursements on time, that's timely disbursements, and generally to provide good service to the student body of Ghana and the Ghanaian people at, as a whole. That is what I intend to do. And I'm working with my team ever since I came in to make sure this I achieve it. And achieving it means that um, putting the necessary things or measures in place so that every single staff that works with the fund gets motivated to work or give out the best that they can. And then engaging the student body to let them understand, like um, what we said earlier, that sometimes people tell you, oh, we didn't know that uh, interest will be calculated as soon as I take the money. It's a challenge that we have and it's something that we need to correct. By correcting it means that we have to make sure that the education, we continue to educate people to, um, to be able to achieve that goal. So if you ask me in the nutshell, that's uh, what I will say. Staff motivation is very key on the agenda. Um, getting the timely disbursement of funds, then making sure that funds are available and if you let me just add this, if you look at the sources of funds for the fund, um, get fund is one. That's let me say a major contributor or major source of funding that we get. Then, then the communication service tax. You know, these are statutory funds that we need to push hard to be able to get the needed funds to be able to do our disbursement. But so far so good. As I said. Since I came in from the 1st of February to now, today's 26th, we have at least done about 17,000 and we'll continue to do more. And by the close of the day, we might have been hitting 25,000. And I'm hoping that by the end of the month, we should be hitting our 30,000 mark because out of the 32,000 that I spoke about, yes. So I'm hoping that by the close of um, the month we should be hitting our 30,000. And as I said, the figures, people keep applying. Right now, if at the beginning of the interview, if I had given you a figure of the number of applications, right now if we go in, into the system again, you see that the figures will change, you know. So we are making sure that as and when people apply, 
the funds are available for us to disperse to them. But of course, let me add that um, our verification processes or our due diligence are usually done before the disbursement takes place. We have to make sure you are a student. We have to make sure the institution that you said you are a student in, you are actually a student in that institution. And besides all this, that institution must also be an institution that is accredited by GTEC because you have so many institutions that are not accredited in the system. So that institution must also be accredited by GTEC to operate. And in fact, the course itself. So if we are to go into that, too, it's a whole lot of things that uh, we make sure are done before the loan is dispersed.